Is the job that you're applying for a sham? How would you know? Stay tuned. By the end of this video, you will know about a few key red flags to look out for that will surely help you to filter the real jobs from the fake ones. For the best advice and guidance on how to get into the yachting industry as a crew member, subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit that little bell icon if you want to get notified when I upload new videos every week. If you are currently looking for a job on a yacht, you would have noticed that there are new jobs posted daily. So how exactly would you be able to filter the fake ones from the real ones? Nine years into the yachting industry, I myself have been approached a few times by jobs that just seemed a little off. Luckily for me though, I trusted my gut and I walked away. But not everybody is lucky though. So how would you best prepare yourself to ensure that the job that you're applying for is a real one? A word of caution though. The advice that I'm about to give you is solid, but by no means are they foolproof. There are a lot of weirdos out there and they tend to get creative. Before I start going through the list of things to look out for, I have to make it clear here that this is entirely dependent on you and your own research. And in today's weird world, you kind of have to be willing to do a little bit of research before you just agree to anything. Let's get started. So a person reaches out to you via email about a job. The first thing to consider is, is did you apply for this job? Does anything about the job description seem familiar to you? If it doesn't, then it could be a red flag. The thing is, if you're registered with websites like Yacht Crew, Yacht Spot, Super Yacht Jobs, it makes it really easy for people to find your profile and therefore to be able to contact you about possible jobs. But this could potentially be a red flag. Why? Well, think about it this way. If you've been put in charge of hiring someone for a position on a boat that you are working on, do you think that you're going to have the time to sit and filter through hundreds of profiles in order to find the right person? Would it not be easier to just put a job post up somewhere and see who is interested and who is available and in that way find the person that you're looking for? Now, I'm not saying if you get approached by someone that this means it's a red flag. No, not at all. But what I am saying is if you did not apply for this job and this person is reaching out to you because they found your profile, just be a little cautious. The second thing to consider is take note of the email address that is being used. So it says that it's from oceanrecruitment at gmail.com. Red flag. Sure. If this person says that they are also working on board to so say it's the chief stewardess or chief officer, then it might say chief stewardess, my ocean, blah, 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 at gmail.com or chief officer at yahoo.com, then it's okay. But if this person claims to be a recruiting agent and say their email address is oceanrecruiting at gmail.com, then that is definitely a red flag. If they're claiming to be a company, which most yachts are, then they have no business emailing you from a free email service provider. Now, I do realize that a lot of the smaller boats and the private yachts won't have this. They will still be using Gmail. But all I'm saying is, is look at the context of what the person is claiming to be um, with relation to how they're communicating with you. So if the person says that they are a captain on a hundred meter charter yacht, then he will not be emailing you from a Gmail account. He will be emailing you from the boat's email account. And this is the same for a recruiter as well. So just pay attention to this really small detail. Um, it could just change everything. So the third thing to pay attention to is the yacht's name. So let's say the yacht is Motor Yacht Unicorn, but you can't find it when you do a Google search. Then this is a red flag. Before even responding to the email, do a Google search on Motor Yacht Unicorn or whatever the yacht name is. If it is a registered yacht, it will be on the internet and you will be able to find it. If it's not, then maybe you should walk away. Okay, so just quickly, please let me know in the comments if you have recently seen a job post which you feel might be fake. And please do let me know what about this post was it that made you feel this way? There are actually a surprising amount of fake jobs being posted weekly. So you might find that your intuition is spot on. 
Plus, it'll also really help me to see if there are any more red flags that I need to add to my list. So please let me know in the comments. The fourth thing to take into account is who is the person that's communicating with you? Um, maybe do a little Google or a Facebook search using this person's name and see what comes up. So maybe it says that the account is only two months old and everything is private or they have no friends and then that's a red flag. And the reason for this is if a person is hiring you for a job on a yacht, um, chances are that they would have some sort of a history or an affiliation with a company of some sort um, for a few years in order to get to where they are to be in a position where they can hire you. If this entire company or the profile is absolutely new and you can't find any information on the people in it or the profiles running it, then this is definitely a red flag. Everybody these days has an online presence, whether they have a Facebook account or not. And if you cannot find anything on them, then it's definitely a red flag. Okay, so number five, and this has been a more common one recently, is in the communication between you and this person, at some point this person mentions that all of your travel expenses and everything is has to be covered by you. Now, this is a massive red flag because in yachting, the boat is responsible for your flights, for your accommodation, whatever travel is involved to get you to the boat. Now, everything, uh, your certificates, your visa, your passport, that is all your expense. But as far as your travel costs to get to the boats, they have to cover that. So if this person says at any point that it's gonna be your expense, walk away. Okay, so that's it for the five main red flags that will help you to see whether or not a job could potentially be a fake. Now, I've got two more red flags that I wanna cover, but they don't necessarily mean that the job is fake, but they are warning signs that the role that you might be putting yourself in could be extremely uncomfortable and dodgy. Okay, so moving on. So say for example, all the communication is solid, the boat exists, it's a reputable company hiring you and all these things. The next moment or the next email you get, they are requesting more photographs of you. And more specifically, they are requesting photographs of you wearing lesser clothing than what you are in your professional CV photo. This is a huge red flag because it's not in anywhere in the industry is this a professional approach to hiring people. And plus, if they're asking you for these things right in the beginning before you even join the boat, can you imagine what they're going to be asking of you by the time you get there? So if this happens, stay away. Okay, so the next point is uh, moving forward. Nobody's asked you for weird photographs. You know, it really seems that this person's going to give you the job. But then all of a sudden you start receiving text messages that make you feel a little uncomfortable. Now, these are messages that might be assuming flirting, harassment, um, whatever it is. If it's making you uncomfortable, then this could be a huge red flag. Granted, there is a line between banter and harassment. The main difference being the conversation leading up to that point. If you were both joking around, all good, then this would not be weird for you at all. But if this message came out of nowhere and it's personal, for example, how good your lips would be on theirs, like, you know, like really creepy, uncalled for remarks, then my friend, walk away. You will be saving yourself a nightmare of an uncomfortable experience and rather just avoid it right from the very beginning. And that's all I've got for you now. I'm sure a few months down the line, some Dodgers would have watched this video and they would completely change their tactics. And then by that point, I would have to make a whole new video. So at the end of the day, it really is all on you. Trust your instincts. Obey your thirst. Spry. No, sorry, I meant really pay attention to your inner voice. And remember, as the saying goes, if something seems too good to be true, then it usually is. Now, if you're unsure about anything, come on over to the Start Yachting group and come and ask in the group there. There is a whole team of experienced yachties in there who would be happy to assist you with any questions that you might have. We are here to support you. So whether you are new to the industry or you, you've been in it for a while, come join us, we got you. Watch these videos next for a deeper dive into being Yacht Crew. Now remember, if you like this video, please hit that little like button. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.